The planet Jupiter has been known since ancient times. It's visible to the naked eye in the night sky and can occasionally be seen in the daytime when the sun is low. In Germanic mythology, Jupiter is equated to Thor, where we get the name for Thursday. Jupiter was Ammon to the Egyptians. To the Babylonians, it represented their god Marduk, patron god of Babylon, with Jupiter's roughly 12-year orbit along the ecliptic defining the constellations of their zodiac, as it takes Jupiter almost exactly 12 years to complete one orbit around the sun, while the Greeks equated Jupiter to Zeus. In the Bible, Japheth, which means Jupiter, is one of the sons of Noah in the Abrahamic tradition and was the father of all Indo-European people. Both the early Irish Celts and the early Britons traced the descent of their royal houses from Japheth, as did also the early Saxons. In ancient Rome, Jupiter was often connected to kings and kingship. Jupiter was said to be the king of the gods and the god of the sky and thunder in myth. Jupiter was also the chief deity of Roman state religion throughout the Republican and Imperial areas until Christianity became the dominant religion of the empire. Jupiter, or Zeus, depicted as the eagle clutching the thunderbolt, is an occult esoteric symbol found in empires from Rome to the Nazis. The Israelites had called Jupiter by the Hebrew or Phoenician names Yahweh, Jehovah, and Adonai, meaning Lord. Proclus writes in one of the verses of Orpheus, and I quote, Jupiter is the king. Jupiter himself is the original source of all things. There is one power, one God, and one great ruler over all. But we have seen that Jupiter and all the other gods were but names for the sun. Therefore, it follows that the sun, either as an emblem or as God himself, was the object of universal adoration. Jupiter Dolichenus was a Roman god whose mystery cult was widespread in the Roman Empire from the early 2nd to mid 3rd centuries AD, a mystery religion whose customs and rituals were restricted to initiates. Dionysus was the son of Zeus, who was also known as Bacchus, the name adopted by the Romans. Saint Justin Martyr, the first recognized philosopher of the Christian era said, when we say that Jesus Christ was produced without sexual union, was crucified and died, and rose again, and ascended to heaven, we propound nothing new or different from what you believe regarding those whom you call the sons of Jupiter. The temple of Jupiter was a colossal temple dedicated to the cult of Zeus, located in Heliopolis of Roman Phoenicia, which is Baalbek of modern Lebanon. This temple was dedicated to the Roman Zeus and the construction was started by Julius Caesar, continued later by Augustus, and was the biggest pagan temple dedicated to Jupiter in all the Roman Empire. The priesthood used their wives and daughters in holy prostitution to raise money and worship the god Baal. Homer told how mighty Zeus or Baal as the Phoenicians knew him, cast thunderbolts on the earth and tumbled the walls of Troy with his earthquakes. The inhabitants of Baalbek feared Baal. They even sacrificed humans in an attempt to pacify him and prevent huge destructive earthquakes. In the mysterious tablets of Ugarit, discovered by Claude Schaefer, Baal is the god of rain, thunder and extraordinary bolts of lightning. The worship of Baal extended in this region to the Jews, Canaanites and the Phoenicians. But Herodotus informs us that God was also known under many other names, such as Jupiter of the Romans, Zeus of the Greeks, Mazda of the Persians and Ammon of the Egyptians.
The Phoenicians were superb shipbuilders. Although based in what is present-day Lebanon, their trade networks allowed the worship of Baal to spread throughout the Mediterranean. In those early days, the Phoenicians inhabited Lebanon. They were fantastic seafarers, and their trade networks extended as far as Spain, Africa, even Britain, and their beliefs followed them. The cult of Baal was attacked many times, but was never extinguished. Kings and other royalty of the ten biblical tribes also worshipped this supreme god. History claims the Phoenicians carried out bizarre rituals to appease their gods. What sort of rituals were they? And what motivated them? Greek and Latin sources mention the offering of children as sacrifices by fire at the Phoenician colony of Carthage around 814 BC. The Greek historians Diodorus and Plutarch both mentioned the burning of children as an offering to the Carthaginian's chief god, Baal Hamon. Diodorus wrote, There was in their city a bronze image of Baal, extending his hands, palms up, and sloping towards the ground, so that each of the children, when placed thereon, rolled down and fell into a gaping pit filled with fire. According to the historian Roy Decker, they even attempted to save their kin by substituting servant children. Nevertheless, when the city was threatened by Roman armies, earthquakes, drought and famine, the high priests ruthlessly sought Baal's appeasement. The religion spawned numerous priests and priestesses expert in the dramatic ceremonies of incense burning and the offering of burnt sacrifices. Officiating priests dance around the orders, chanting frantically and cutting themselves with knives. The citizens were worked up into great frenzies at the prospect of displeasing Baal. In times of great turbulence, human sacrifices, particularly children, were made to this father of the gods. For these purposes, a ceremonial burning ground called the Tophet or roasting place was established. At these ceremonies, even the most powerful families had to produce a victim to placate Baal Hamoth. Archaeologist Lawrence Steger, who excavated a Carthage, notes Diodorus and Plutarch and church fathers like Tertullian condemn the Carthaginians for the practice of child sacrifice. Some add lurid but unverifiable details to the sacrifices witnessed by distraught mothers, grimacing victims consumed by flames, human offerings received in the outstretched arms of a brazen statue. Human sacrifice was not, however, limited to Phoenicia and its colonies. The worshippers of Baal practiced their grisly rites throughout the Middle East. In the city of Jezreel, now situated in present-day Israel, we discover further evidence. In the Book of Kings from the Old Testament, Ahab was described as a notoriously wicked king. Under the influence of his evil wife Jezebel, Ahab built altars to Baal. In another case from the Old Testament, we read of King Heel's rebuilding of Jericho, wherein he sacrificed his firstborn son, Ibrahim, and his younger son, Sigub. This is an explicit reference to what are called foundational sacrifices, where the victim's bodies were placed within the walls or under its foundations. This practice was also followed around the Dead Sea in nearby Canaan. We even have evidence from the Hebrew Bible. The 6th century BC prophet Jeremiah accused syncretizing Judahites of setting up a high place of Tophet in the valley of Ben-Hinnom outside Jerusalem. There they burn their sons and their daughters in the fire. Allow me to turn your attention to Nimrod, as Baal was also known. It is important that you know that Nimrod incorporated into his worship system the grisly practice of human sacrifice and cannibalism. Our authority Hislop says, The priests of Nimrod or Baal were necessarily required to eat of the human sacrifices, and thus it has come to pass that Karna Baal, Karna meaning priest, and Baal referring to Baal is the established word cannibal.
in her own tongue for a devour of human flesh. As Steger concludes, the classical and biblical texts, as well as the archaeology, all indicate that healthy living children were sacrificed to the gods in the Tophet. Our purpose in making this case is not to malign the Phoenicians, but to understand them. The Baal-based religion revolved around the cycles of nature necessary for survival and prosperity in the ancient world. Primarily growing crops or raising livestock as well as the growth of human populations. So we can see the most prevalent religious system in the immediate Canaanite and Phoenician context was the worship of Baal. The actual worship of Baal was carried out in terms of imitative magic, whereby sexual acts by both male and female temple prostitutes were understood to arouse Baal, who then brought rain to make Mother Earth fertile. When crops were abundant, Baal was praised and thanked for his abundant rain. The prophet Hosea suggests and Jeremiah graphically depicts the debauchery and excesses that developed in the worship of Baal. Because of the sexual overtones of Baal worship, it was easy to use the metaphor of adultery or prostitution to describe the problem that such syncretism raised. The Israelites struggled with Baal worship until the time of the exile, especially after its official establishment as a state religion for a time during the reign of Ahab and Jezebel around 850 BC. The people firmly believed that by their actions they could manipulate and control the gods. During the Roman period, it was like orgies temple with wine, women and drugs. It was like super night club during the Roman period, like Ukraine. Now. Discotheque. Yeah, yeah. So as you can see, you can see the stones there. It tells alone that there have been orgies here. You can smell it. We have here the representation of Bacchus ladies, dancing ladies, the uh, grapes, from the grapes we make wine, and wine was the drink of uh, the ritual of Bacchus, and the vine leaves, and on one side we have the egg, egg shape, is the uh, egg is the symbol of fertility, and the arrow in between the two eggs, so we have arrow is symbol of um, death, so we have life, death, all along the uh, monumental entrance. And on the other um, stripe, we have the shape of a poppy. Poppy is, uh, is a drug. The drug poppy uh, also uh, was a symbol cult of uh, Bacchus. They freely gave of their wives and daughters and sons to the service of the temple. The people firmly believed that by their actions, they could manipulate and control the gods. So what is Baalbek all about? If the people of Baalbek feared Baal, who is also known as Jupiter, could this sky god have driven their destiny? Both myth and legend go much further to support the malignant role of Jupiter in mankind's affairs. Remember, Jupiter goes by many names. In ancient Phoenicia, he is Baal of our Baalbek. In Israel, he is Zedek. In Egypt, he is Amon. In India, he is Shiva. In ancient Greece, he is Zeus, king of the gods. In all cases, he is the supreme deity. You said uh, the god of Islam, Allah, is connected to Baal? What we found out in our researches, and it's not that hard to find out, is that Allah's original name was Baal Allah, and also who Baal or who Baal, because Baal is also one of the pronunciations of Baal. And, and uh, so Islam, Muslim, yeah. Mormon, yeah. witchcraft, who's Baal? And Baal is the false Jesus or counterfeit Jesus. He is the one behind sexual perversion, all kinds of stuff. Like what's going on right now in the internet, pornography is just off the charts. And with Jezebel, and by the way, Baal is a variation of Baal, Jezebel named herself that because she was a worshiper of Baal. 
and in the Baal temples which she had, she employed full-time male and female cult prostitutes who committed sex acts in the open for everyone to watch as a part of their worship ceremony. So today when someone engages in pornography of any form, whether they realize it or not, they're engaged in Baal worship. How about just, I mean, it seems like almost suddenly uh, homosexuality is normal uh, as defined by society. Allah was being worshipped at the Kaaba in Mecca by Arabs prior to the time of Muhammad. It was formerly the name of the chief god among the 360 other idols in the Kaaba in Mecca before Muhammad made them into monotheists. According to the Encyclopedia of Religion, Allah corresponded to the Babylonian god Baal, and Arabs knew of him long before Muhammad worshipped him as the supreme god. Hubal was the pre-Islamic chief god of the Kaaba among the other 360 deities, with a statue whose body was made of red precious stones and whose arms were made of gold. My name is Robert Sepper. I appreciate the time that you've spent here with me. Thank you for sharing. Please don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again soon.